So this video is a direct follow-up to the Curve Calculator Part 1 video. If you've not seen the Curve Calculator Part 1 video, don't watch this, it'll make no sense to you. Only keep watching if you want to know a little bit more about the accuracy of the Curve Calculator. You see, when we did Part 1, we said the distance between the observer and the target was 80,000 metres or 50 miles. But some people pointed out in the comments that, well, hang on, look, that might be um, the distance along the curve and not actually a straight line. If we get it off Google Maps, it could be this distance here. So how does that affect the accuracy? Well, here is how I would work through that. Um, and then we'll talk about the accuracy at the end. The first thing I want to do if, I, if, if I'm given the 80,000 as part of the curve is I want to work out this angle here. The full angle from this side to this side. How do I do that? Well, I know that this part of the curve here, divided by the full circle, will give me the same ratio as this full angle here, divided by my 360 degrees. So 80,000 divided by the full circu uh, circumference of the Earth, which is about 40 millimeters, four times 10 to the seven, is gonna equal the angle, which I'm, this angle here, which is I'm gonna call theta, divided by 360 degrees. What that means is 360 times 80,000 divided by uh, the circumference is gonna give me this angle. So my first step is to work out this angle Right, we can tick that off, we've done it. Now what I want to do is figure out what this specific angle here is. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to deduct it from the angle we've just got and leave me with this angle here. So how do I work this out? Well, we know what this distance is. This is our 6,371,000 meters plus our two meter observer height from the last video. So I know that my hypotenuse for the triangle is this. I know that this side here, is the radius of the Earth. So knowing these two here, knowing the adjacent and the hypotenuse, I can work out this specific angle using the cosine. Now, this isn't a lesson on trigonometry. Um, if anybody wants a lesson on trigonometry, put it in the questions and I'll give you a trigonometry lesson. But I'm gonna call this angle one, all right? So I can now work out angle one. I've done that. Now, if I know angle one and I know the full angle, then theta, right, which was a full angle, minus angle one is gonna leave me this. I'm gonna call it angle two. So I now know this angle here between these two distances. Why is that important? Well, if I know the angle and I know this here, which is the, the radius of the earth, then I can work out the hypotenuse of this, uh, this side of the triangle. Again, I'm trying to work out the hypotenuse when I know the adjacent and the angle so I can bring the cosine rule into play again. And I can figure out this entire length here. And once I know the entire length, if I subtract the radius of the Earth from it, 6,371,000 meters, I'm left with just the lost height up here. Um, now I've done both methods, and on the last video it came out to around about 440 meters. This comes to just above 441 meters. I suppose it depends how many decimal places we're carrying over, but essentially it doesn't make a difference. Um, try it yourself. So hopefully that's answered that question. Please, if you've got, you know, topics that you want, whack them in the comment section. I'll make a list and, and we'll get to them all, hopefully, at some point. Thank you. Bye-bye.